Hey guys, Sebchuf here. I came up with an idea to solve a problem that the community finds in the game. Many people are complaining that discords are a normal part of Realm of the Mad God, and they're making realms themselves dead, as people choose to play in bazaars instead, through people popping keys. Players are finding this as an issue because realms aren't experiencing as much activity as they used to. Also, people don't like having to do runs with some guy leading them exactly where to move and what to do, and the discord meta is really unfriendly to to beginners, as there's a discord requirement for some dungeons, and the less people play in realms the less support beginners get to um, push through the difficulty in the beginning of the game. People can't imagine having uh, discord not open at the same time as a realm, well most people at least, <laughs> but that actually wasn't always the case. Before I go through my idea of how to fix this, let me go through a bit of a timeline of how discord runs started and how it took hold, and um, how it wasn't a thing early on. Keep in mind Discord came out in 2015, but for the longest time, endgame dungeons were a lot different. Like for example, in the beginning, tombs and ocean trenches were considered late game, and that's all people did for the first five years until Shadows came out. And it wasn't like now where people want to play with random people just to make the runs more efficient and effective. Back then, what players did was this thing called pitching, or at least private groups. If um if it wasn't open in a realm from a sphinx drop or a hermit drop, what people did was they would either buy keys with gold or buy keys from realm I from other people, and they would pay, for example, free life for a tomb. That was always the expected price. And free life was a big deal back then. Uh, maxing life was actually pretty damn tough. So every life pot was really important to the person that was paying, um, that is of course, and the people that would get them as drops. Because in a tomb, um, one life is guaranteed to person from the boss. So if you're playing with two other people, you're guaranteed to get the free life back in return that you paid for the tomb run for. And so what people did, um, guilds and friends, they would spend hours either opening tombs or OT with the pots that dropped, trading them to the people that had the keys, just so they can roll for whites basically. Even when tombs and OTs happened in Realm, people were really keen to finish them because at the time it was the only source for life pots and um, it had really good whites at the time. And no matter how dirty um, the run got, you were really incentivized to finish it. You kind of almost wanted the public runs to get dirty because the more people that nexus, the higher chance that you would get the life pots. Um, one person can get all three, for example. But if you were to finish it solo, um, which would be a guaranteed free life, that would make the win even more exhilarating of soloing the tomb after it getting so messy and everyone nexusing. And then later on, Shadows actually was released as well. If someone was opening a Shadows Key or paying for a Shadows Key, these were free or true life as well. And not sure from memory if more than three people or more were guaranteed the life pot, so I don't know if you could do it infinitely. But the opener always wanted the life back basically, and it was it was more so expected that it was given to him, like they didn't have to ask. Because life was so valued, but the person was paying for the Shadows Keys anyway. In private runs, people did these not for the life pots, um, because they gave them away to the key opener usually, but they did them for the uh, white bags, which were considered more of the stronger ones at the time. And also people would like to do the realm shadows not only for the white bags, but also because they valued life highly. Now even though Discord came out in 2015, um, people didn't create like efficient shadows runs or efficient tomb runs. All that there were on Discord at the time were these pitching discords where it made it easier for buyers to find key sellers so they could do those infinite chains of tombs and shadows and, um, and guild discords. And then in 2017, both Nest and Lost Halls got released. On release, these were extremely hard because no one knew what was happening in them and they were the hardest dungeon by far at the time. They also had no HP scaling at all and since there were no discords, it was really hard to complete runs. Initially, people were just popping the keys in Nexus and um, yeah, the runs weren't going too well. So that's when discords were being created just to complete the runs. Like for example, the first Lost Halls discords were like LHH and SBC. Small groups could not do the runs because um, you needed a lot of coordination. 
to not only complete the runs, but it made them a lot more efficient. And it also allowed the group not to make mistakes, because for example, especially in Lost Tools 1.0 where there was no scaling, if someone dragged a crusade, that was the run done. So without a voice chat, it made it really tough to communicate where everyone was going and if there was a mistake made. It also allowed groups to make the most out of every key, because back then people did split runs, so they not only went to do voids, but they also got people to do cults, like a small percentage of the people. So that from every lost horse key they got a cult as well, so they could infinitely do voids. And also, another reason why discords were made is if there was public pops all the time, which was the only other way that it could possibly be done, because small groups couldn't do it, then griefers could join, and a lot of them did join the discord runs anyway. And yeah, as I mentioned before, it only took one crusade to fuck up a run basically. And if one didn't do it, then two definitely would. Guilds couldn't do runs, but as soon as one guild did do a void run, it was considered like a challenge run being complete. But the guild runs, uh, they didn't continue, people went back to doing discords because yeah, it was just considered a challenge. And once it was done, it was ticked off. After people saw how effective discords were for making lost halls and nests quicker, um, they basically made dis started making discords for everything, so for example there was like EDZ and Crazy Keys, two other discords, which basically ran every dungeon. And at this point, because of chest events and mystery potions, no one really cared about potions as much anymore. People just really wanted to go over the white bags, which weren't like a set drop. Um, it was a percentage chance to anyone, so it didn't matter how many people you were running with loot-wise, it just made the run faster. Then, in the middle of 2019, um, all of the discords took inspiration from a previous guild and adopted strategies like full skipping that significantly reduced the time that it took to complete a void run. And coordination was even more important, so discords, they became even more vital for those strategies to make runs even faster. Discords that had unconfident mods at the time became even more inactive and irrelevant. At the time, um, pub halls had an average worst player in the run by far, but since they had more competent staff, um, they had more successful runs and, and thus more activity. Then after that, HP scaling was added when Lost Halls got reworked. Um, this made small runs possible, but again, they weren't worth it. If you could add people to the run to make it significantly faster, then why wouldn't you? The new HP scaling was a linear equation that was not really worth, um, that was not punishing enough to uh, people that stacked up runs like crazy. Decker's mistake was not making the HP scaling a bit more. It was 10% at the time in Lost Halls, for example, on Marble Colossus. It should have been more like 15 or 20%. Probably like 15% with the vital combat and priest nerfs. Later after that, 03 was a new dungeon, and after people got used to it, got confident, and people realised that some of the loot was shared between the people that finished the run, this actually brought back that motivation of doing small private runs with just your friends and some awesome guildies. So people went really out of their way to make sure the runs were really small. Like for example, if they had the runes ready, but there was a lot of random people um, at the end of Oryx 2, where Oryx 3 would be spawned, and they refused to leave, they would just clear down another realm. Even though it would take them 30 minutes, they found it worthwhile because of the loot. Lastly, Decca made three changes in September of 2020 to try to combat the Discord steamrolling. They added Vital Combat, which made pets weaker, rebalanced classes, and both of those changes basically made it that people couldn't phase tank as much when full skipping and killing bosses which was a really good move against the steamroll metal. And even further, they drastically changed the HP scaling from the linear formula that they had to one that heavily disincentivized having runs over 40 people and made runs with around 15 people generally as steamrolly as the overstacked runs used to be. And that's because of the strange new HP scaling that they added and the new power creeping, but that's for another video. I wanted to make this video so maybe it could have a positive effect on Realm, but also I know a lot of other developers that are creating similar game to Realms um, listen to some of my content and watch some of my content, so I'm hoping that could help them as well. 
because um, the devs of other games are really looking for feedback and suggestions. And now a year later after the vital combat changes and HP scaling, a majority of players yeah, can't imagine not doing runs without a Discord. Unless it's like, um, unless it's an O3, you wouldn't really see yourself doing one of the exaltation dungeons inside of a realm. Another big reason why people would like to use discords is, as you can imagine, it can take like 30 minutes to clear a realm, depending on the group size, 20 minutes if you use a big group, or maybe even less, but it takes that much time to guarantee to get a key. Um, not a key, sorry, but like a Lost Tours run, for example, since a sentry spawns once per realm. And the thing that sucks about those is you can't choose who doesn't come to those. Not only are discords better for organizing key pops, because you can pop them much more often without having to clear down a realm, but you can also pop them privately, so you don't have griefers um, coming in or other people HP scaling or ruining it. So why did this all happen? How come discord became so commonplace in the realm community? Well, it was pretty clear that when Lost Halls and Nest was released, guild and random public runs were not enough for farming to be successful. Discord just allowed for much better coordination and efficiency. Um, it prevented griefing and mistakes, yeah, which wasn't as much of an issue. And it also allowed for that really pay to win medal where you didn't have to clear a realm for a portal. When people realized how beneficial discords were, basically every dungeon was starting to be ran in through a discord. And by this time, since there were so many um, handouts of potions through chest events, candies, and other means, no one really cared about the drops. And from what I know, or from what I experienced, don't think Lost Tools has guaranteed pot drops. At least, I know the Void doesn't. Spending that much time in a dungeon that barely gives you any potions is certainly not worthwhile. Just for the pots, that is. If you were to do it in a small run and it became guaranteed, like a two-man. If you can actually believe it, people used to love even getting the mana. Um, just listen to this clip from this ancient video in Silver Dollar's channel complaining about doing ocean trenches with too many guildies. Just everyone's so overpowered, so you end up having you know, 10 warriors, 8-8 eight, eight warriors all in there. Um, everyone's boosted, and it is pretty tricky to get the mana drop. But yeah, I'm sure just before O3 was released, people had no faith in um, Discords not being the metal, and they thought it was just going to be something required for every single dungeon in the future. And then O3 shook things up by releasing loot, which wasn't a potion, and it was the only non-potion that was like shared between the people that finished the run. And what I'm referring to is like the tops, like the tier 14 weapons and tier 15 armors and tier 7 abilities. People really went out of their way to make sure the runs were small. Though a lot of the reason for that as well is because runes are quite expensive and quite a deterrent to doing runs. But imagine how many small runs would be being done and how much fun people would be having if there was a better solution to the opening of Oryx Sanctuary. I'll, I'll go through this in a future video most likely, so make sure to sub. It's worth questioning this, would Ofreeze ever be ran in discords if there wasn't such a shitty rune system in place? And would they regularly be run in realms if they had a loot system similar to other exalt dungeons? I think the answer to both is no. Lost tools are much more available through sentries because it takes a lot less time to get there, but players aren't as eager to do those over discord organized runs, unlike Ofreeze. But they probably would be, just like with old tombs, OTs, shats, and current Ofreeze, if the loot system was different. But yeah, OTs, Tombs, and Shatters. Shatters actually, even though they're so easy to, f to screw over, Shatters were actually a dungeon that people loved to do through public drops, even though it dropped from the painful avatar. Because yeah, the pots were more valued at that time. And these potentially got even more messy than Lost Halls. But yeah, Oryx Free, Shatters, Tombs, and OTs were the dungeons that people did publicly. The other exhortation dungeons don't get ran as much publicly. So what could be the solution to this? Well, what I was thinking, instead of decentivizing big runs, like what the new horrible HP scaling does, um, we should instead be incentivizing small runs. This was why Tombs, OTs, Shatters, and o were ran without discords so often. So why not continue this? It also does incentivize risky gameplay 
because when runs do get tiny and they're failing, it gives um, extra reward on top of the exhilarating feeling of finishing the run. Also, this is supposedly one of the reasons why a private server named Revenge of the Fallen uh, became wildly popular in the middle of 2019. Their system was more so based on damage, so depending on how much damage you did do, you were more likely to get loot, but um, that benefits small runs indirectly as you can imagine. And the devs are keeping this system in their rebranded version called um, Beneath the Nexus, which will come out soon enough. But I think Realm of the Mad God and other Realm-like games would benefit strongly from having this kind of the system in the game, as it's like super motivating, and it's a funner way to combat the RNG that every Realm player gets screwed by, that doesn't allow them to get these specific items that they're looking for, um, which could be a more interesting alternative to the Forge for example. Just an idea. It would be great for example if the new Shadows had like a system where if you like soloed, it increase the chance of getting a white bags like 33% or something because the speed that it's ran solo is so disgusting but it would be extremely fun remember that no matter how fun a dungeon is I don't think that it would be run consistently just because it's fun and in fact I think bad dungeons would get ran consistently if the loot was amazing like for example, um, Ice Tomb has come to mind, I don't think anyone has fun doing them, but the loot is so great when you do do them. It's basically like gambling for loot with no risk, whenever there is a chest event that is. I'm kind of concerned with exhortations though, because with farming those people only care about how long the run is. Maybe they can multiply the amount you get with less people? I don't know, something like that. Since discords are already firmly established in the game and make everything more efficient, there's a chance that nothing can be done at this stage. But at least the realm-like games can use this as a lesson going forward to prevent a discord meta watering down their games as well. So what do you guys think? Uh, do you guys have a better idea of how this can be combated? Or do you guys think the disincentivization of big runs were enough? Let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in videos like this, I'm planning to do quite a few more, especially with the other games being in production that are similar to Realm. So if you like them, make sure to subscribe. I'd appreciate it a lot. And also, you should consider joining my Discord community. We talk about stuff like this all the time. I'm really active in there. We passed 5k members not too long ago, so it's good fun. It's discord.gg slash or link down below. Peace. I'll catch you next time.